What's poppin' for us, H.I. School? Welcome back to Tribal Review. On today's show, we'll have complete coverage of the homecoming festivities. Also on the show, we'll meet another one of our senior broadcasters. And I'll have results from the latest sporting events. All this and more coming up on Tribal Review. TLC Automotive is an independent family-owned auto repair and maintenance facility that provides vehicle inspections, oil changes, wheel alignment, engine repair, and much more. Open 7.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, close Saturdays and Sundays. Giving straight answers that you can trust about your vehicle is what we do at TLC Automotive. Located at 22 East Walnut, Independence, Missouri, call Jim Carlson at 816-833-4411 to schedule an appointment. Hey there, Florida State High School. I'm Sarah Relihan. September is National Better Breakfast Month. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, so make sure you start your day off with some good and healthy food. And I'm Karina Hernandez. Today is Wednesday, September 22nd, 2021, and here are your top school news stories. Homecoming week festivities concluded with the football game on Friday, September 17th, where the royalty were introduced at halftime. Each member of the homecoming court was escorted by a cheerleader and the queen candidates were escorted by a family member. The student body voted Riley Keene and Savannah Short as the 2021 King and Queen. KFOI sports reporter Jordan Guthner caught up with both of them to find out how their reactions to being crowned King and Queen. I'm here with Riley Keene and Savannah Short, homecoming King and Queen. How do you both feel about being King and Queen? Um, honestly, like, I show a lot of love, to be honest, like, from all my classmates and just from everybody that I've, like, gotten to know this year. I feel like this year's been a good year for me, so I'm just, I love everybody. I would agree. I feel overwhelmed with love and attention, and it's good, yeah. It's exciting. The homecoming dance took place in the senior parking lot on Saturday, September 18th, and was the first time in recent history that a dance was outside. Students also enjoyed Spirit Week in the games during lunch. Tribal Review reporter Nevaeh McNew covered homecoming week in the files this report. The theme for homecoming was Hang Loose Homecoming. Member and student council and homecoming organizer Lohani Galeas felt it was a successful week. Planning for Spirit Week, it's a lot of fun. The only challenge is depending on the theme for the day, whether it's a low risk or high risk, meaning is it easy for students to participate or not, is the only challenge. Our Spirit Week days were Monday Class Color, Tuesday Tacky Tourist, Wednesday Floating into Paradise, Thursday tie-dye day, and Friday Ford Apparel. Students like Hannah Roberts have certain preferences on the Spirit Day weeks. Today, <laughs> I am like obsessed with tie-dye, so like I was ready to go all out today. Okay. The band marched the halls Friday morning, and Trinity Thompson thought that marching the halls really set the tone for our Spirit Week. I love marching the halls. Like in the morning, I'm like getting ready and I'm like, we're marching the halls, we're marching the halls. And then we finally do it. And it's just, everybody's watching, everybody's paying attention. And it's so cool because everybody, like everybody's focus is on you. And yeah. The homecoming week ended with an amazing dance under the stars that was well attended. Reporting for Travel Review, I'm Nevaeh McNew. Thanks, Nevaeh. That was a pretty cool story. I like seeing how homecoming came along. Yeah, it was actually, we had a pretty good turnout compared to the past like couple years when like no, nothing was able to happen. Mm -hmm. We actually did pretty good. Okay, so after the break, we'll find out about another one of our broadcasters. Stay online with us. We'll be right back. Greg Pulver once said, a customer knows good value when they taste it. And that statement holds true when tasting Culver's delicious Wisconsin cheese curds. Come in or carry out and let Culver's welcome you to deliciousness. Welcome back. We continue our senior profiles for this school year with a look at another broadcaster. It turns out to be our very own Karina Hernandez. Here's reporter Payne Ramirez with the story. Mariana Hernandez is a senior executive producer for the broadcasting program. She enjoys helping others complete their projects. 
Um, I would say helping other kids with their stories and doing my own stories as it is for like mass media and all that. And just, you know, the environment. I love the environment. It's always so positive and happy. Karina is in her third year of Anchoring Travel Review. Broadcast advisor Mr. Benjamin Marathi feels that she is a big part of the program. Karina comes in ready to work. She shows up early sometimes in the morning and they come in and they have breakfast and then she's like, what do we need to do? Okay, I'll get this done. Stop bothering me. And then she goes and she gets it done. Um, what I appreciate about, about her is that she um, takes control of a situation, uh, knows what she needs to do, and she'll go help people when they need it. Um, and she fills in and gets the job done and does what I ask of her. Not only is Karina a vital part of the broadcast program, but she has been a manager for the wrestling team for two years. Senior Julian Burke appreciates her strong work at B. Karina is the one to get it done. Um, she pretty much yells at people to get their work done, which sometimes it's easy because they don't really listen to me or Sarah, but she is definitely helpful to kids when they need it. Karina moved here in seventh grade, reporting for travel reviewer Peyton Ramirez. Thanks, Peyton. You know, it's actually really cool seeing you profile and seeing as you are like kind of like a vital aspect as well to the program. It's kind of weird seeing myself in the story, but I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. Julianne Berg now joins us for the Indian Sports Report. Hey Julianne, what's happened the past week with our Indians? The fall teams are continuing with success. I'll have updates after this break. Big Frog Custom T-shirts and more is the perfect place to celebrate your smile. Visit the store and choose thousands of designs. At Big Frog, you can set up your online pop-up shop full of custom apparel. You can design a line of apparel, select your sale price, and customize how long your pop-up shop lasts. There are no setup or design fees, so you can get as little or as many shirts as you desire. Come and set up your pop-up shop today at Big Frog located at 2100 East Jackson Drive in Independence. Hey guys, I'm Julianne Burke with your Indian Sports Report. The varsity football team hosted Van Horn on September 17th. The boys defeated the Falcons 58-20. The offense put up 373 total yards during the game. Javen All had a big night with rushing scores like this one in the first quarter Hands from four yards out. The defense had big stops like this one by Aaron Henson for a one-yard loss. The boys now sit at 3-1 on the season. Yeah, so the girls varsity softball team hosted Excelsior Springs on September 15th and beat the Tigers 8-0. Savannah Short was on fire from the plate going 3-for-3 three three with a triple and three RBIs. Pitcher Emma James went seven innings allowing zero runs on two hits and striking out four. The team traveled to Green Valley on September 16th and lost to the Eagles 10 to nothing. It was on to Park Hill South Tournament on September 17th where the Indians took on the Blue Springs Wildcats and lost 7 to 2. They bounced back in the second game to defeat Oak Park 11 to 3. Orion Morton did some dam major damage in the Northmen pitching by going 3 for 4 with three doubles and four RBIs. Alexis Smith dominated the pitching circle, allowing five hits, three runs, over seven innings, while striking out two. September 18th, the team continued with the tournament with a 5-2 loss to Park Hill South. The team dusted themselves off by coming back with a big 10-1 victory over Harrisonville. Nevaeh Wilson led the charge with three hits and two RBIs, while Emma James fanned out eight Wildcats from the pitching circle. Finally, the softball team hosted Raytown on September 20th and beat the Blue Jays 6-1. Savannah Short went yard to lead the Indians with two RBIs. Madison Hasty and Alexis Smith combined for seven strikeouts from the pitching circle. They sit at 10-4 and four on the season. The girls tennis team traveled to the Belton Tournament on September 16th. Alanis Cameron led the Indians with the second place finish in the B flight singles. Bella Gilmore and Kayla Roberts took fourth in the A flight doubles. The next stop for the tennis team was Winnetonka Tournament on September 18th. Alanis Cameron led the team once again with a first place finish in B flight singles and Emma Brown placed third in an A flight singles. The girls went on to host Excelsior Springs on September 20th and beat the Tigers 7-1. The girls varsity volleyball team traveled to North Kansas City on September 14th and lost to the Hornets 3-0. The girls bounced back by hosting Raytown South on September 16th and shut out the Cardinals 3-0. Avery Gray led the team with seven aces, and Keeley Farmer had six kills. Naomi Bernard aided the team with eight assists. 
The Indians competed in the Winnetonka Tournament on September 18. The team tied with Barstow, lost to St. Joe Central, lost to Lawson, but came back against Platte County for a W. Avery Gray had six aces and 20 assists for the tournament, while Nikki Snyder had 15 kills on the day. The girls now sit at 3-4-1 and four and one on the season. The boys' soccer team had their home opener against Grandview on September 14 and beat the Bulldogs 5-3. Lucas Smith led the charge with four goals, while Luke Clark had one. The boys traveled to Ruskin and dominated the Golden Eagles 8-0 on September 16. The Indians spread it around with three goals coming from Lucas Smith and one each from Mateo Castillo, Angel Cornejo, Xander Shepard, Brody Hendricks, and Zardy Perry. The boys sit at 5-2 and two on the season. The girls golf team competed in the Tom Stout invite hosted by Oak Park. The team shot a 491 overall. Ashlyn Button led the Indians with an even 100 and McKenna Gilpin shot 125. Well, that's all for your Indian Sports Report. I'm Julie Amberg. Sarah and Crane will have more news after this break. TLC Automotive is a local, fast, and great way to get your car fixed. TLC offers oil changes, brake checks, vehicle inspections, and much more. Contact Jim Carlson at 816-833-4411 to schedule an appointment. Welcome back. It's time for this week's Tom Tom Talk. Cub reporter Mariah McQueen went around to find out what your guys' favorite animated series is. As of March 2021, 31.33% of Americans can watch Cartoon Network in their household. This year, I wanted to know Ford's favorite animated series. It has to be Avatar The Last Airbender. I really love the plot line of the show, all the complex characters. It's just a really great show with a lot of character development. Um, probably Spongebob, because like, I just grew up watching it, and it's just like it's nostalgic for me. And, um, I don't know, like, um, but I always like the, like, the older Spongebob's compared to the new ones, because the anime is just awful here lately. Um, my favorite animated series would have to probably be, um, Demon Slayer, and because the animation, um, is really good itself. The artwork is stunning. The um, like just like the whole scene of everything. It's really cool and it's just very interesting to watch. So yeah, I like Shrek because <laughs> it's about an ogre and a donkey and they're best friends. Not really. <laughs> My favorite animated series is Kuroko no Basketball, and that is because I really like basketball and I love the animation of it, and I think it's just a funny animation to watch. Um, my favorite animated series is the one I'm watching right now, Jojo's Bizarre Adventures, because um, it is action-packed, I think. Everything that happens in it is very interesting, and it is very hilarious in some points. But it also hits me in my feels when something sad happens. Um, I guess like the How to Train Your Dragon TV series, because, well, I mean, the fantasy, it's silly, and it has a decently good plot for a kid's show, so that's nice. My favorite anime series is probably Gravity Falls. I like action, adventure, and mystery, and Mabel's Pet Pig Waddles. Um, probably uh, Avatar The Last Airbender, just because uh, it has such an easier plotline to follow than most animated series. Most animated series are just all over the place, but that one just seems to be the one that actually stays on topic. Um, Spongebob because I watched it since I was five and I'm sad because Spongebob died. My favorite animated series is Adventure Time because of how well thought out the story is. My name is Mariah McQueen and I'm a travel review. Thanks Mariah. Um, I don't know, the only like animated series that I watch is my mom's like Daker Kid show. So if we're going off of that, I'm going to say Bubble Guppies. Spongebob. <laughs> <laughs> Justin's was at the high school for a meeting for the seniors, which included graduation announcements and capping out information on September 22nd. Justin's will also be here during lunch periods on October 7th and October 14th for additional graduation product orders. Winter sports team held their meetings during advisory on September 20th. If you were not able to attend, you can email the coaches for more information. Most of the winter sports teams are also looking for team managers. Contact the coaches or managers that you already know of for more information. 
As always, if you're looking for more information about Florida Sage High School, you can always find additional coverage at FOHSSignal.net. There you'll find stories about the students of the school, so check it out today. Well, that's it for today's show. I'm Sarah Relihan. I'm Karina Hernandez. And I'm Julianne Burke. Thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time.